so far we've just been basically playing with colors. I showed about changing the image right away because it was just way too huge. Um, but we've been mostly playing with colors and CSS lets you uh, style more than just colors as we see here a little bit with images. We can also do things with alignment, paddings and margins and other interesting uh, visual things because a little while ago this was just completely black and white really boring and now I've got some interesting colors and such going on and we have other effects let's do this let's go back to where you had your body selector we're gonna add a new selector here just to show you something interesting then we'll do it the right way I've got background color fuchsia so everything's a certain color okay let's add another another property here so within the angle brackets I mean the curly brackets still inside a body we add a new property this time is text dash align we can align the text inside of an element I'm saying wherever there is a body element align the text in the following way and the pop-ups give us a few examples center justify left the default is left just for fun here I will select center and then semicolon end of statement so I'm saying wherever there's a body set the text to center okay I'll save it and I'll run it I'll see the result and oh, that's cool my heading at the top got centered oh my image got centered too even though it wasn't an image and then body hobbies and all of that and everything looks pretty good maybe you see however that your bullet points don't look that great some browsers do it this way, that it leaves the bullet points on the left for some reason. Other browsers, I think Firefox does also move it next to your text, but it'll still look kind of weird. So I'm just showing here that this is part of the complexity of CSS in terms of sometimes you, you have an idea of what you want to do, but it doesn't quite do what you need it to do, or it does more than you need it to do. Maybe my idea was just to to center parts of the design and not the whole design. So by putting it here as this body, this body selector, it did it too much. It applied it to too much to everything. And as you'll go through the readings, you'll, you'll see how it explains about these concepts of specificity, how specific are you affecting your content. This is not specific enough. It's affecting everything. It's too much. So I'm actually going to delete that. I was just showing you that you could set align your text to everything and it'll do everything and not everything will look great. But instead, maybe I only want to align a couple of things, like maybe just the first heading and the image. The first heading and the image. So I've already got a heading. I've got an image. <clears throat> so let's try it this way. Heading one, I'll add a new property, text align, center. So I'm saying wherever I've got a heading one, center it. Okay, it's centered. I want to center the image. All right, so try the same thing. Go to image and center it. Just like I centered my H1, give that a try. Text align center onto my image. Hmm. Doesn't do it. Trick question. So this is the example where CSS is harder than HTML. When I put text aligned to the body, everything aligned, it kind of looked sort of how I wanted, but not quite. So let me target specific things, the heading one in the image. But when I did it with image, technically I'm not doing it the right way. We're saying anything inside of this um, attribute, uh, inside of this selector, center it. Anything inside of this selector, center it, when I had it up here. Anything inside of this selector, center it. This is not the same sort of idea, so it, it kind of ignores it. You have to think back that the way we've got it set up is we've got a heading, 
content inside of it, so it centers. We've got an image. There's no content inside the image. There's an attribute, which is not quite content. We've got an image, but it's content of something else. What is it content of? What is image inside of? Paragraph. What if we try to then align the text of the paragraph? Let's try that. Because if I back up over here, I have image, I have paragraph. OK, let me try to instead, I'm going to remove it from image and instead put it to um, paragraph. Text align center. Cool, that did it. But it also did it to perhaps something else I didn't want. This paragraph right here. I have one paragraph, but what if I had other paragraphs throughout my code giving a little bit of explanation of what I am about to show. Um, now it's, again, it's not quite right again. Every, here, technically, every example of paragraph will be centered, which for the moment looks fine, but then when I add more paragraphs, probably will not look fine. Again, HTML easy, CSS not as easy. If I still only want to target the image inside of this paragraph, what do you think I might need to do? How might I specify? If choosing a selector, a, an element selector selects too much, what do you think I might need to do? What's that? An ID or class? Yes. We need to be a little bit more specific with an ID or a class. Now, which is the right way? An ID or a class? Any opinions? They're both right, they're both wrong. It just depends what you need it to do. I know that an ID can only be used once per document. And if it does what I need it to do that one time, it's fine. But I may need to align more than one image inside of a paragraph. So then an ID wouldn't work, a class would work. So class or ID will work, but you just have to know, and you'll know as you get more practice and as you read, which is the right one for the right task. So most likely a class will work better because I probably want more than one image inside of more than one paragraph to be centered. So that means we need to invent our own. We're not going to use paragraph or image. We're going to need to invent our own. Next line. Um, the order of how we write these does matter, but I don't want to get into that detail too much so far. So I'll just go back to my last bit of CSS so far and create image center. And whoops, I used a capital letter there, so make sure you use capital letters also if you want. Text align center. And I'm spelling image center fully spelled out. That's, that's fine. That's valid. I could call that if I want dot image CTR, image center, image center. I could call, I'm making this up. I could call it whatever I want. I'm uh, used to this way, image within center capital C. As you get more advanced and you write a lot of code, when you have everything lowercase, it's a little harder to read. We're used to words with spaces. In the programming language, in this instance, spaces will not work. I cannot call this yellow space color. That is technically two different selectors. Again, that's too advanced that I want to mention at the moment, but we use no spaces. Therefore, it's very common to then put capital letter as the second or third word of the selector. You could also put a capital here, but you'll see very often when you get to advanced tutorials and books and so forth, they're often saying use the lowercase for the first word and then uppercase for the following words. Image, center, class. If I want to call it that, I can. 
and I want to use capital letters for readability, I can. But I have to remember to use capitals everywhere. And for a lot of people, it's just easier. Keep it all lowercase. But honestly, which is easier to read? Image center all run together like that lowercase? Or image center with some capitals? That's a little easier to read, but you have to remember to use capitals. Okay. So we're saying anywhere where a class of image center exists in the body, center the content. So we need to apply this class to the right place. We've got an image inside of a paragraph. I want the content inside of the paragraph to be centered. Paragraph has a class attribute of image center. Now my image is centered, and not that other paragraph. Yeah, then that was kind of a lot of effort to do something simple. Again, HTML is easy, CSS is a little less easy, JavaScript is hard. JavaScript will have many more instances of complexity in writing code. We're only going to do one week about it, but that's why we've got a whole class about it. Question? Uh, are there if statements in HTML? In HTML, no. There's no if-else statements. In JavaScript, there are. And in CSS, if you're using the most cutting-edge version of CSS, there is if-else. But basically, just JavaScript has if statements. Okay, so did you get your image centered? Did you get your heading one centered and nothing else? If you did that, then that worked. If something else also got centered, you're not quite doing it right, check with us. We want to show you here that writing valid CSS code to be specific can sometimes require a little bit of effort. I created a new class, told it what to do, and then I applied it to the... Um, to the right place. And then my image got centered. Well, when I created a rule for paragraph, I set background color to black and white text color. And that looked fine in my case down here. But then now I kind of see this background color behind my image that maybe I want, maybe I don't. So they both inherited that, those properties and values. But now that I've started to create some of these other rules, maybe I can change things up a little bit. Because if I do background color here, inside of image center, red, Now, only the background color of the image has a different color. I'm just putting something here. I'm going to change it in a moment. I'm just showing you here. Now that I've invent invented a new selector and applied it to a specific place, I can control it. This is what a lot about what CSS is. Do I have the right selector targeting the right thing? And then how am I changing it? How am I affecting it? I called this whatever I wanted, image center. And it makes it sound like the only thing that this code is used for is to center my images. But I'm about to add a few more properties that are not just about centering my image. So it's not wrong that I called this image center. It's not technically wrong. It's not syntactically wrong. It's sort of like logically wrong. This code seems to say the only thing it does is to center my image, but it's going to do more than that. So the point of that is, sometimes when you name your own classes or IDs and you give it a certain name later on, it doesn't make sense what you named it, which is fine, it always happens. But you can easily change this to some other name that makes more sense, like edit image. 
But then you also have to change it down here. It doesn't automatically change. If I call this image center here, but then I named this something else, edited image, this is not going to automatically change. You have to change it in both places. Just something to note. Because what I also want to do is add a padding. We haven't talked about this one yet. Let's add padding 100 pixels. I don't know what that does. Save it, run it. Let's see what it does. What does it do? What does padding seem to do? Some kind of border? Look at that. I see like a lot of extra space. There's a lot of space up here. Now, if I've got my window maximized like this, I've got a lot of space to the left and to the right. If I've got my, my window kind of a little smaller, it looks a little more uniform, just pointing that out. Most of us probably have our browser maximized, or maybe halfway through the screen so we can see the code plus the browser. But this seemed to give some kind of border. Actually, there is something called border. Five, uh, five pixel solid black. What does that do? Border. It looks like it's adding a hundred pixels around the uh, the size the the element. Yes, and then border. Well, if you check that one out, that creates an actual like border around the element, not around the image, because this class is attached to the paragraph. If this border was added perhaps to the image itself, that might cause something slightly different. But as we've got it right here so far, I'm adding a bunch of space, 100 pixels, inside of the paragraph. And then I'm adding a border all around the paragraph. And I'm creating kind of an effect here where I've got like a, a, a an art mat around my image. Just kind of to play with this um, 25 pixel padding, 15 pixel dotted yellow. I'm just kind of throwing things out at you. Um, Oh, look at that, now it looks like the, the marquee lights around the movie theater poster. So this is, this is CSS, this is a visual thing that it's in charge of. HTML is in charge of just the content and here's my image here, here's my text here. But then CSS is all about now it looks like this and now it's aligned over here and now it has this border and padding. That's the purpose of CSS. They go together and here I, a moment ago, I had some sort of value, some sort of value here, and some sort of value here. Now, this looks different. I just had something, colon, something. Now, I've got something, colon, something, space, something, space, something. This is what I'm saying about CSS. There's a certain syntax. There's 200 of these properties to memorize, just picking a number. You don't have to have them all memorized. But I need to know, how do I add a dotted line around my picture? Well, I go to some search engine and look up how to add dotted line CSS. You'll get the answer. Or in our readings, in our textbook, in, in the various notes and such. And then you, you, you see the example and then you apply it. Then maybe you'll memorize it for next time. Or if you don't, just look it up again. Again, you, you even advanced um, programmers have been doing it for decades. Maybe they have, you know, 40 commands memorized that they do over and over and over. But then there's still 150 more that they don't memorize and they don't need to because it's not part of the project. But maybe someone else on the team knows it and then they do that part. So what are the other possible values? I had solid here and I had dotted. What else might exist? Let's say I don't tell you what other types of lines we could do because we had solid and I just showed you dotted. Let's say I don't tell you any more. How might you find out how many more of these other types of lines I have? What's that? Search engine, yes. Let's do that. Let's go to any search engine you want and look up CSS, CSS border property. 
any search engine. I went to, to Bing over here. Any search engine. You'll get then millions of results to give you the answer. They're all right. They're all wrong. You just have to read the one and see if it applies to what you need. CSS border property. You get a bunch of results. Oh, look at that. W3 schools. That's one of the resources that I often put inside of our lectures. It's one of the big important websites to learn this stuff for free. There's over here, oh, Mozilla. That's another place that I've been using for our lectures. There's some place, formget.com. Never heard of it, but it probably will give you an answer. Uh, gopher.com. Anyway, I'll just pick the first result. Let's see what's here. CSS border. The CSS border property allows you to specify the style, the width, and the color of an element's border. Scrolling down. Oh, we have dotted, we have dashed, solid, double, groove, rich. So we have all of these types of things that I could add here besides the two that I showed you. There's rich. Look at that. I'm so artistic. So now I have a ridged border. It totally looks like a cool little um, border of a poster that I have on my wall. Um, offset, style, examples. Oh, look at this. They have done what we've done, slightly more advanced. They, they've said wherever we've got a paragraph and it has a class of dotted, set the border style to dotted. And then here's the examples. So five pixel border width. You do the border color. So basically, there's also a shorthand. We did the shorthand. We specified three things at once, the width, the style, and the color, by saying the border of my element will be whatever width, whatever style, whatever color, in one command, we did the shorthand, the shortcut. That's just the shortcut of if I instead had done border-style solid or border-color red, we did it so that it's all in one. You can get really advanced. You can do over here border-left. You can specify all four sides to be different. Here they did a kind of a little graphical flourish that they said this paragraph will have only on the left border, border left, six pixel solid red. And it does like a cool little tab only on the left side. The background color then is like gray. This site is also like our lecture where you can try it yourself and it pops up and you can just play with this. What if I do this with 16 pixels? Solid blue. Looks like that. It's too close to the left. I haven't shown you this one. I showed you border. Uh, not border. Uh, padding. What about padding left? 25 pixels. There's that. So I'm just kind of throwing things out here for you to sort of think about this. This is a whole new world. This is a different language that you style your your boring old designs because when we started our project earlier it looked like this black and white a big unruly image boring defaults then when we started to add our CSS colors sizing alignment all of that. It's still the same content. That's the purpose of the HTML, your content, your paragraphs of text and your images and such. The purpose of CSS, styling it, making it look nice or interesting. Um, and then when we get to JavaScript next week, well, I want to press a button and I want it to pop up to ask my name. And then I want to take my name and, and appear on screen dynamically. Or I want to click this image and I get a pop up. So then it shows me a gallery and I click next and I've got another image. That's the interactivity. That's the purpose of JavaScript when we get to that. And again, easy, medium, hard. 
HTML should be easy, relatively. CSS is a little harder. I mean, JavaScript will be hard. But again, this is not going to be a class where we do a lot of hardcore programming. That's CIS 152, CIS 165, and then part two of this class, CIS 256. I want to cover three weeks of a little bit of coding so that you're, it's not a totally alien thing. And there's still lots to learn about it, but this is enough for the moment. And uh, this should be enough sort of for to get started on the main assignment for Sunday. You have a discussion assignment and a main assignment. We'll go look at that in a moment. General questions about the coding and the concepts of CSS. The readings will give you a little bit more insight. The other recommended material will give you more insight, but any general questions? Let's look one more time at Canvas. Let's go back to Canvas. Let's look in detail what you actually have to do for the assignment. There's this discussion that is a little theoretical for um, when, you, when you make your websites as we go throughout the course. Ultimately, we're going to make a variety of websites in this course. We'll, we have 16 weeks. We go through it little by little. And we've got two assignments this week. There's the uh, week three website inspiration. That is 10 points due this Friday. As usual, there's your initial post, and then you reply to some classmates. You have to write your own opinion first by Wednesday, the end of the day, and then you reply to some classmates by Friday. Um, so you have to find three websites you like. Tell me a little bit about them. To get full credit, you need to answer these. There's an inspiration article that you might look at. You have to reply to two classmates at least. You can do more than that if you want, but at least two. That's due by Friday. For full credit, answer these two questions. Again, reiterating what you need to do there. And that's broken for some reason, so I need to check that. That's just reminding you that you want to check the rubric. It might be hidden up here. This is exactly what you're going to be graded upon. Did you do this? Yes, full credit. Did you do that? Sort of. Half credit. Did you do that? Nope, no credit. So grading should not be a mystery how you get graded. If you do all of the requirements found in the rubric, which basically is just recapping what's in the instructions. And then there's already an example that I wrote right here. This is kind of fun. If you do, if you go look at my link, this is kind of a really fun website. It's a, a purposely retro website from back in the ancient days of the 90s about uh, how web design was cutting edge back then. And some other examples here, and then people's replies and such. That is one assignment due by Friday. Then the coding assignment due by Sunday. After you've read more of the CSS lectures and practiced, and you'll go to that assignment, 10 points, due by Sunday. Here's that color, that Adobe Color site. You can go there and kind of play around and find some cool color combinations. And this color works with that color. And then it tells you, here's your code. How do I apply that? It's in the reading. And what you need to do, etc. make a file. You're going to just continue your project from last week, that sort of About Me website that you made last week. You're going to continue using it. Hopefully, you still have a copy of it. If you don't, I guess you can borrow the starting point file. Oops, too big. And you're going to make a CSS file. You're going to write your CSS externally. We wrote it embedded into the document. You're going to do the reading and see that what I would like you to do is instead write the code in a separate file. HTML file has your HTML code. CSS file has your CSS code. Right now, we combined it together, and for the purposes of the lecture, it worked fine. As you go through the lecture, you need to learn how to separate them. 
that's the correct way that's that's the more correct way that's the more professional way that's what's required for you to turn in use your code editor to do the following do this do this do this do this you're gonna get graded on doing this make sure you did this 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 and this etc if you did it full credit if you didn't no credit etc 10 points due on Sunday lab time today until 6 30 tomorrow until 6 30 Friday from 1 to 3 so we're gonna end the lecture at this point for our in-class lab time until 4 30 and then outside of class time if you need it and that's what you've got going on this week this is what I would have said last week if we had a lecture on Monday but I think you figured it out online questions for the purposes or the goals of this week okay there you go so we're gonna end the lecture at this point you can stay for the lab as long as you need it two things do one on Friday one on Sunday